Hey guys, it's Funkify here from Memo Hut, and we are back at PAX East, and this time we are looking at Firefall with Matt over here, one of the community managers for Firefall. Matt, how are you doing today? I'm doing really well, thanks. Yeah. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to check out a little bit of the early footage of Firefall, and then we're going to come back here and look at some of the higher level of Firefall, which we have yet to see. So let's go ahead and uh, pass it off to Matt. Matt's going to be commentating while I get to play. Sure thing. So to start off with, Firefall is a free-to-play shooter. So it was our goal really to create the, the best and most ambitious free-to-play title ever created. So we really wanted to focus on AAA quality while also being free. Uh, so to start off with, Firefall is first and foremost a shooter. It's, it's an action-oriented combat. You use mouse and keyboard controls to actually move your character around. Aim matters, just like any other shooter on the market. What really differentiates us though is our massive open world. So you're cooperating on an open world with hundreds of other players. What's really great about PAX East is we actually uh, are playing with our beta testers. So this is live on the internet in our beta environment. And I should say that our beta is a real beta. It's not a marketing piece that uh, we can just release out there with polished content that people are playing. We, we really, really want to engage our community on feedback and make sure that we're creating the best game that we can. So you'll often see things in the game that are just placeholder. We have female vendors that speak in male voices. We have tires that drop instead of normal loot items. These are things that we expect people to provide feedback on and let us know what they think about, how often things are dropping, how it is to interact with vendors, how alive the world feels. And it's important for us to get that feedback early on so that we can make changes. So to start out with, Firefall takes place on Earth 200 years in the future. So it's, you'll notice that Earth doesn't look the same though. Throughout history, we've actually done a lot of terraforming on Earth in order to make it easier for us to live. About 60 years ago, a firefall event took place which destroyed most of humanity. It was an asteroid that came over the planet and dropped a bunch of meteorites that just decimated the planet. But there was actually a silver lining to that, that we discovered Christite inside the meteorites. And Christite allows us to create a perfectly pure energy source that uh, really kind of created a renaissance age for humans. The technology was really able to advance a lot faster than it has been in the past, including uh, the SIN network, which is what you just interacted with, uh, the SIN tower itself, that stands for Shared Intelligence Network. And this is kind of what an example of what we think the internet could be in 200 years, right? Humanity has really tied themselves to data in and information. So they actually have, uh, you know, data being pumped directly to their brains and on their HUDs and everything else. So this is a kind of an example of that. The SIN networks are really important to gameplay as well because by interacting with the SIN network, you get missions pushed to you. For instance, the Water Water Everywhere mission where Ratchet lets you know that, hey, there's a problem in this network. She saw you come online and it's like, hey, there's a new guy in town. He might be able to help me out with this problem. So I'm gonna push this mission to him. Arrow uh, is the other lady talking to you. She's actually part of your team. So you're actually part of this like squadron that's just working to make the world a better place or at least trying to make some cash if you can. So Arrow is one of the people that helps you out in that task by uh, letting you know that there's missions going on or, or helping you out with those missions by giving you direction. So right now what you're trying to do is close off some of the water valves in Copacabana because they're having problems. Copacabana and takes place in Fortaleza, Brazil, and it's normally an arid desert, but through the resources of water desalination and, and water pumps, they've been able, they've been able to actually create a whole new environment. These pumps, though, have gotten filled with these Arana. The Arana are actually not native to Earth, so it's not like these are mutated creatures. These are actually from a planet called Alpha Prime, where we found additional Christite. So as Christite is being shipped back, these Arana have kind of stowed away and kind of decimated the local flora and fauna. So they caused some definite problems there and uh, are, are kind of a nuisance to everybody around. You'll notice most of the creatures in, in Copacabana and in the Core Forest area are kind of insectoid. You know, we have more creatures coming online, uh, including uh, mammalian creatures, I should say. Uh, you know, different things that are going to happen depending on what location you're at, where you are in the world. These pod that the Irana spawn in can be dynamically generated by our AI system and we can make more or less of them depending on who's in the area, how many players there are, and various things like that to make sure that it's always a fun and engaging experience. It's nice to see that there, it's nice to see that there isn't just collect quests to start off in the game. Yeah, you're, you're right in the action from the right at the beginning, and you're, you're doing stuff that actually matters, it looks like. You know, this has a physical impact on the environment. You're clearing out these camps of these uh, creatures, and then you know, you're going back into the town and seeing like the fruits of your labor, essentially. 
So we felt it's really important to make sure that players feel like they have an engaging experience. You'll notice this isn't that original of a quest. You're doing a kill quest, right? We know that. Uh, but by the fact that Firefall is an action-oriented game, it's actually a little bit of fun, right? You're not just going around, tabbing, hitting one button over and over again. You're jetting around. You're actually engaging in combat and uh, using your abilities like Crater. Nice timing on that. Nice head right on top of his head. And so the combat actually makes these quests feel a little bit more fun, we think. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that that's the only type of missions we have. We aren't just a kill and collect quest. Pick up some awesome loot there, a green medi frame, so a medic battle frame. Looks like you need to be level four for that, though, so that'll be a little while. And that's a good point to bring up, is that uh, all the battle frames level up independently. So you're playing the assault right now, um, and there's a no collision on that thing. We Again, we are beta, so that may happen. Got a few more Arana to kill, but back to the battle frames. The, uh, the assault battle frame is all about dealing damage, right? So his primary weapon is this plasma cannon that just does massive damage. His right click is a scatter shot, which is like a shotgun blast. And then his alternate weapon is an assault rifle. And these secondary weapons can be changed at any time. You can go and pick up a different one, grenade launchers, shotguns, etc. And we have more and more of those coming online soon. The primary weapon, though, pretty much stays the same throughout the game, except for the fact that you can install modules. You can change the alternate fire. You can change the way it reacts. You can uh, increase the rate of fire, increase the damage that it does, increase the area of effect, make all these modifications to really make the battle frame yours. I notice right now you're playing in third person. That was another big argument we had in the studio about, well, do we do a third person game or do we do a first person game? It's a lot of effort in order to do either one of those. But in the end, we decided we all like different ways to play the game. Why not do both? It's more effort, but it's worth it. All right, so now we're looking at some of the higher content in Firefall, currently available in the beta, some of the different um, weapon loadouts and uh, armor loadouts that you can get in the game for different classes, et cetera. Bobo's here, or Matt here is going to actually go into that a little bit. And uh, so what are we looking at right here? So what we've actually done is, is recently in beta, we've expanded to a much larger area of Coral Forest, uh, expanding the world. Everywhere on this map that you can see terrain is open area for the players to test. You were just over in the Copacabana region, and now we're over near Trans Hub, which is basically the headquarters of the Accord. Uh, everything covered in purple is the melding. And this is a really good point for staged content. The melding blocks off content that we aren't ready necessarily to, for the players to access, but also things that the story is not ready to tell. So as players progress through the game, they will actually build melding repulsors to push back the melding and then reveal this terrain. That's already been done. For instance, Dredge is an area of the game that we've already completed. We showed it off at PAX 2010, uh, but we're not letting players play it yet because well, the story hasn't reached that point yet. So stage content is really important to us. Uh, but Trans Hub is the area of the Accord. This is the headquarters of the Accord, and it's where they hang out. There's a lot of different missions here. Uh, if I bring back up my map, you'll see that there's some chosen patrols and chosen incursions and down thumpers, dynamic missions that are happening in this area. If I hadn't interacted with the Sin Hub in this area, I wouldn't have access to this content. And there's Sin Hubs located all over the, the, the world at this point. Um, some of the stuff that we also added to beta, though, are our resource collection and resource refining. So thumpers are a big part of the game, right? Thumpers are things that you call down, mining devices that you call down, and harvest resources. And then those resources get refined so that you can expand your technology, create new weapons and new items. Some of the cool new stuff that we've added to the build is a scan hammer in order to locate resource veins. Now, we are live on our beta right now, so I may not be able to find a resource vein that uh, hasn't been mined out. But the scan hammer is something you bring up on your call down menu, you, you access it, and then slam the hammer on the ground, and it does these shock waves throughout the ground to try to find resources. In this case, it's all black, so there's nothing here. <clears throat> but as I run over to this area, you'll see that there's a chosen drop pod and the Chosen over here attacking. The Chosen are the uh, main enemy force that has come out of the melding. We don't exactly know who they are or what they are, but all we know is that they really want to kill human humans, and they're really, really good. They like to reload though, so hopefully I can actually kill them off before they kill me. So your main enemies in the game aren't other players or another faction, but in fact the NPC of the Chosen. In the open world, yes. So while Firefall started out as a uh, an 
PvP game. It was a three faction PvP game. We actually switched over once we started creating new content because the one thing that we didn't like in PvP games was there's nothing to do if there's no other players. You might take over a base, you might do something else, but there's no other players there to interact with. You're kind of screwed on what you want to do, right? I want to destroy this drop pod before they respawn so that I can get rid of them. And what do you actually gain by destroying this? Do you get minerals, resources, experience? All of the above. So I just exploded it. So that you'll see that there's some titanium carbine that just dropped and I'll pick that up. That's useful for when I need to refine that resource into titanium plating in order to unlock larger thumpers, which then give me more resources, et cetera, et cetera. It's kind of an ongoing process. That, you know, Everything in the game kind of ties together. All the while, I'm still looking for resources that I can drop a thumper down on. Now I noticed your HP hasn't really regenerated. Do you have regenerative HP at all, or how do you actually regain that HP? You, you actually do not have normally uh, regenerative HP. Uh, you can equip your battle frame with loadout slots that have regenerative powers, but in this case my battle frame is just a green battle frame and I don't have any module slots available. My green backpack only has two ability slots. What I can actually show you is the, uh, the refining process, or the, the manufacturing process to build a new backpack because I did pick up a, a blue nanoprint template earlier in the game uh, when I was playing earlier that I can actually craft right now. The cool thing about our game is you actually, it's, that's the MMO aspect of it, is that it's not just a shooter, but you have those progressive elements. So you'll notice on my battle frame that there's no little things here on my boots. You can, you can see the flat little panels that show that I have crater enabled. I wouldn't have those if I didn't have crater. My backpack is relatively small. Uh, if I switch over to my plasma cannon, you'll see the little dongle thing on there. It tells me I have triple shot. All these little things tell you what a player's carrying. So when you actually look at that player, you can tell, hey, they're higher level. They have different abilities. I know what they have just by looking at them. Uh, so if I find the manufacturing station, it's up here. I can go ahead and uh, craft out that new backpack and see what it has in it. It may come equip, pre-equipped with abilities. Now, why, why are you about to do that? I was going to ask you. Uh, you mentioned that the game is in beta. When can we expect to see uh, more people invited the game to open up into open beta? Wh where, what, how is the timeline coming? It's really well. So by the end of the year, we expect everybody to be in beta. So I'll just be that clear. So everybody should be able to play the game. But the way our beta grows is very natural, right? It's a Gmail-style invite system. We, you know, as a smaller company, we looked at Web 2.0 companies and startup companies and how they grew their user base. And because Firefall is a social game, we wanted to make sure that people were able to interact with their friends and, and uh, really play together. So we made sure to have an invite system. So as a player of beta, you'll get an invite that you can then invite your friend. They'll then get an invite that they can invite their friends, and so on and so on, growing exponentially over time. I have no friends. I'm forever alone. <laughs> nice. So I just got a blue backpack that I can drop on, and it actually came with three abilities. So not only do you notice that my backpack is now bigger, if I jump that up, you'll see that now I have Afterburner installed on my boots. Uh, as well as Crater and Shockwave, which is a new ability for the Assault that does a nasty little Shockwave. Uh, but that that refining, pro that manufacturing process, it takes time, real time. So the refining process is the longest part of that time. I'll gather the resources and then come back to the manufacturing station here and actually look for refining templates. Uh, so I can research new technologies. I can do refining for like sifted earth, toss that on there. And it's going to take 7 minutes and 30 seconds. 7 minutes and 30 seconds seems like a long time. I can just leave this and go off and do other things while it's through. And I could even log off for the night and have my refining processes go down. You'll notice I have two slots right now, but there's two more available. That's, that's where our monetization comes in, that I can buy myself some convenience and have four slots if I buy two extras, right? We don't want to sell power in the game at all. So no weapons, no armors, things like that that actually change gameplay at all. We want to sell convenience and cosmetic items. So convenience items like our resource things, uh, convenience items that my thumper might get 15% more resources per thump, or I might get 10% more XP per session, things like that in order to do for convenience. Cosmetics, you'll notice that my battle frame has colors associated with it. You can buy different colors, different decals, patterns, tattoos, hairstyles, faces, all those kind of things to really sell uh, the uniqueness of my character rather than the power of my character. Another thing that differentiates us from most MMOs is the power curve, right? The level 1 character to level 15 character. Most MMOs, 
it's impossible for those two players to ever fight against each other. The level 15 character just stands there as people are missing and missing and missing and trying to hit them. In our game, because it's skill based, it's like any other shooter, I'm still doing damage and I can still beat that guy. If he's not a very good player, I'm going to win even though I'm a lower level character. There is still some more power. That level 15 character is still maybe two times more health, two times more damage than that level 1 character, but that level 1 character, if he's a much better player, can still dominate. Well, that's great to see. Matt, I really appreciate you coming out here uh, to PAX East and showing us off Firefall. Really looking forward to this game. As always, guys, if you guys want to learn more about Firefall, you can do check out that on MMOHut.com. I'll see you guys later. Peace.